We've still got lots to come on our big replay, so I certainly hope you can stay with us. In just a moment, Scotty Palmer has all the news from a vital round. Really busy at the offices of the Sunday Press, none more so than their sporting editor, Scott Palmer, after a frantic round of matches this afternoon. Scotty has been putting it all together for the Sunday Press tomorrow. Scotty, if we can start off out at uh, VFL Park this afternoon, Peter Dacos played a blistering game, but I believe he only just made it to the ground. He was panicking, Sandy, because uh, he got caught up in all the traffic out there. He was diverted by the police to a couple of roads that were dead ends, and he didn't get to the ground until 10 past one. Raced him with his bag, and the sweat was pouring off him, and he thought, God, I've missed it, I've missed it. But he got there in time and played a wonderful game. He certainly did. Now, Scotty, let's stay out at VFL Park for a moment. We saw the umpire take a few numbers in our highlights. Who officially were the players reported in the game at Waverley? Well, there were five, Sandy. Uh, Rhys Jones was reported twice. He allegedly hit Matt Ryan with a forearm and Gavin Krasiska. The others to face the tribunal will be Doug Barwick, who was booked by the emergency up by the name of D Goldstink for striking Brad Shine, Mark Naley for striking Barwick, Shine for sp striking Barwick and Bernie Evans for, for striking Peter Dacos. So it was a busy uh, time up there for the umpires. Yes, it certainly will be too at the tribunal. Now let's go down to Cadinia Park. Geelong played host to Essendon and beat them. Kevin Sheedy must be scratching his head down. Well, he said the Bombers ran out of legs today and he's ordered them to stay home all day tomorrow to watch the Swans-Melbourne match at the SCG because he wants uh, all his players to look for the strengths and the weaknesses of the Melbourne side who they're playing next week. He won't give them any let up, Sheedy. But John Devine down there, he was just holding his head tonight. He said, I've got a headache from all the moves Sheedy made. He said, I just couldn't keep up with them today. <laughs> I think Sheedy's doing the right thing, Scotty, because, of course, all the action will be coming his way and hopefully everyone at home's way on seven for that game tomorrow. Now, what about Darrell Baldock? St Kilda looked to be in the box seat, then suddenly the game was gone. Well, he said the loss today has put the club back 15 years. That's a harsh statement from the doc. He said too many players think they are better than they are. It was an attitude that beat the Saints today, nothing else. And he's going to really work them over through the week. It was a very, very bad loss for the St Kilda fortunes for 1988. On the other hand, Scotty, and finally tonight, Richmond celebrating at last. Well, they haven't got much to celebrate, of course, but they're all out of Frankie Dimatina's restaurant over in Carlton tonight. Plenty of the vino going down in the spaghetti. And uh, Kevin Bartlett said for the first time all year, it was ex these experienced players, not the younger players who carry the day. Michael Roach, seven goals, three, a return to full forward, wonderful for him. All right, Scotty, thank you for that. And we look forward to reading all about uh, a big day of football in the Sunday Press tomorrow. OK, Sandy. Scotty Palmer reporting there.